Hey folks, Roy here coming at you with a bookshelf speaker do-it-yourself enhancement modification, if you will. I picked up these BIC Venturi bookshelf speakers about a year ago, secondhand, couldn't pass them up, $40 for the pair. I mean, they look brand new to me. Um, real quick about the speakers, nothing fabulous about these. I mean, the build is, you know, it's okay. Uh, it has a plastic veneer, almost like a, uh, a graphite faux wood veneer on it. Uh, you can see here, this is a, uh, um, a fluid uh, tweeter, which I think a lot of the people are saying as they're kind of bright, which that's exactly what these exhibit, pretty bright on the top end. Uh, it's not recessed here. I do like the chamfer for, uh, uh, you know, the, di the dynamics there as far as... Um, the sound emitting that's a good aspect but it would have been nice to have these drivers uh, recess flush with the front the grill is okay you know it's just got the standard peg um, no big deal there let's let's talk about the model um, the model is the DV 62 SI there we have it okay and now again I picked these up a year ago they replaced my Bose Acoustamass 5 satellite speaker system it also had a passive subwoofer with it, and I always thought they sounded decent. They sounded pretty good, um, and I bought them new from the Sears uh, in the mall in Idaho Falls, Idaho in the mid-90s. I was in prototype in the Navy, so I was in the military. Now, a year ago when I replaced those with, with, uh, with these bookshelves, I thought, man, what have I been missing all these years? they sounded pretty darn good out of the box. So then I started digging on the forums online and I gotta say there was quite a bit of chatter about these. And the gist of the chatter mostly was, hey, these are great speakers for the price. Because I think these things were like $140 uh, when they first came out. Maybe even less than that at times when they were on sale. But then they went on to started highlighting uh, the low lights and they are kind of bright. Uh, they would say these terms like fatiguing to listen to, and I don't really know what that means, honestly. So I dug more and more and more, found out a couple people modify the crossovers, and I reached out to one guy to try to get some details, and when he offered to rebuild them for me at the price he did, I, I couldn't pass them up. So I sent him in the crossovers. He sent them back to me. Here are the components that came off the two crossovers. I'm not going to go into component details and all that. I might do that later. So what I decided to do before shipping them off is say, look, um, let me do a baseline. So I left them in my living room. I didn't want to take them in the backyard, hang them 20 feet off the ground, you know, with no sound in the background, no wind, and do a near field test with a nice high-end calibrated uh, microphone and blah, blah, blah. So I left them in my living room, right where they're going to always sit. I got the cheapest calibrated microphone I could buy off of Amazon, this IMM-6. It is calibrated. I'm using the cow file in REW, Room EQ Wizard. I built this little jig here with a tripod mount, a uh, thing to hold the microphone here. This, this cord is not used. That's just a splitter that I'm using as a mount. And then I put it on the tripod, 32 inches, aimed it right at the middle here, 32 inches away. Did three or four sweeps for the left. This is the left speaker three or four sweeps for the right, save those files, and I got the frequency response from about 10 hertz to 20,000 hertz, okay? So I got a baseline. I go and remove these, and um, I take the drivers out, and inside this box, this is 5 8 inch MDF, nothing fancy, not a lot of support on the sides, just some uh, 45 wedges, okay? And it does have this, this this is why it's called Venturi. It's the way this port is designed on the inside. I'm not even going to show you guys, but check this out. That is what came out of it. I mean, it was literally just stuck in there and just kind of like stuck like that. So another thing this gentleman from California said uh, is to buy this. Um, this uh, there's a it's called Pro uh, yeah small projects. Owens Corning Pink Small Projects, Home Depot, this was $6.50. It's just enough. He even had a diagram on how, you know, what dimensions to cut this once you lay it out. All right, there are all the pieces cut out. 
and there's a pattern how you can do that. Here's the left speaker here. I elected to use contact cement, and I was just kind of liberal, smearing it up in the corners and the edges. He did say uh, to make sure that you put some of that behind the tweeter. Uh, it helps out the tweeter, and there it is. You can see it all in there. And what used to be in there was this little thin piece of polyfill. That was it. Now we got all this. Now I'm going to install the uh, crossover first, hook up the two drivers, put it all back together. And then of course I'm gonna slap in my uh, new crossovers and I'm gonna to listen to them, let them warm up, listen to them for several days, let them break in a little, little bit here and there. And then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna repeat that test. I'm gonna repeat the test with REW and I'm gonna share with you those results. All right, here's my setup. Not the best as far as the listening room, as you can see here. There's a chair here and a couch here. I don't have any chairs here because this is a walkway with an entry over here. So it's not the best. Uh, you got a wall about three and a half, four feet here in the window. Uh, on the left uh, speaker, on the right, there's effectively no wall. It's just an office and open, open space there. Um, for the setup, again, using the uh, calibrated microphone by Dayton Audio. It's the cheapest version here. It's 32 inches pointed right there at the middle. 32 inches away. Um, the line in to my PC is here. Um, then I've got RCA uh, output from the line out of my PC. Uh, my PC line out going into the RCA in of my uh, amplifier, Class D amplifier. This subwoofer is, is unplugged, but the tone controls for the subvolume, subfrequency, treble, and bass are always are, are all counterclockwise, turned down. And then of course I've got um, uh, I've got the level uh, appropriately set for an OK level in room EQ wizard. And I'm doing one channel at a time. So right now I have these speakers disconnected in the back see that there so that's the setup okay folks here we are in the computer i have room eq wizard loaded up and i'm going to show some of the before and after frequency sweeps um, for these bic bic dv62 si's before i do that though i just want to let you know um, dave let me know i could mention him um, he's the gentleman out in california who modified the crossovers for me Again, um, I couldn't pass up what he wanted to modify the drivers. I thought it was uh, a no-brainer, so I shipped him out to him. He turned it around right away, shipped it right back. And uh, I like what I hear. Um, and I like the work he did, and I like the components he used. He used quality components uh, much better than what came stock. Um, very knowledgeable guy. He knows electronics. I come from a bit of an electronic background in the nuclear Navy, reactor operations and stuff. So when we started talk, talking, um, we were on the same level, right? He tests every component uh, prior to uh, mounting it to the circuit, which is a great practice because once they're mounted and you run into issues, you're having to lift leads and to figure out where the problem is. And that's never a fun thing to do. Furthermore, he tests the crossover once done uh, on a driver, on a speaker. So all that's great. Um, so let's go into the before and after. I think I talked about the modifications, uh, the interior modifications with the uh, insulation and the driver. So let's start here. I'm going to open up the left before. Now the left has a wall. There's a wall about three and a half to four feet to the uh, left of the left speaker. And again, I did not want to... Um, do any fancy near field testing of these speakers. I just don't have the time and energy to do it. Um, I just left them where they sit in the um, listening room where they're at. So let's dive right in. Here's the left average. Three passes averaged. There's the left before. And I'm going to open the left after now. Left after. 
And there you have it. So the green is after. Um, you can pause it and take a look. Uh, some the, the the two main areas I see different here is seeming this this seems to be uh, um, carried over to the other speaker as well. So there's this heightened area right through here, uh, around uh, peaks around 18k here, um, uh, 18k uh, uh, one one point eight k right right eight one thousand eight hundred. Um, right through here and then you could see here those highs are subdued okay so that was part of the goal of this of this modification um, this is one sixth smooth so there's the left I'm gonna close the left out now I'm gonna open up the right now the right doesn't have a wall effectively no wall the wall is about 15 feet away uh, let's do the before on the right and then after on the right. Hopefully you can see this. I've got a wide monitor and I'm using OBS to capture. So the after, um, the after is the orange. Same thing. You see that? You see that little bit of a hump there? Oh, and by the way, also the base is elevated a little bit on the right. Uh, with no wall and I think on the left I have to go back and look at the left it was a little lower but anyway this this is the main thing right through here and here now I'm gonna close that out and I'm gonna open up a a toned uh, sweep meaning I listened to some music different genres I enabled my subwoofer dialed everything into my liking then I moved the tripod microphone to an ideal sitting position. as about 10 feet away, roughly, uh, right in the middle. Um, toned it all out, and I did a sweep. And that's going to be this one right here. And man, when I did that sweep, that bass, the subwoofer, was like a sonic boom like a fighter jet flew over my house. So I know for a fact I need to tweak there. That is way too much, even though I have it turned down because when I first started tweaking, it's like, whoa, it's way too much, so I turn it down. But it, in the end, uh, please understand, I'm not going to leave it this way. I, I, I need to bring that subwoofer down. Uh, and I have a frequency control through the LFE uh, coax, right? So in my uh, amplifier, I can um, tweak the frequency uh, crossover part. Uh, there is a knob dial for that and also for volume. Now I'm going to compare that to the right after. Okay. And I don't like this at all. I got to fix that. But what I do like is kind of some smoothing here. See that green? I like that. I'm going to keep that upper end, higher mids to upper end as it is, but I will work on this. So there you have it. In the end, they are back in service. I'm pleased for the money and time invested uh, uh, in the modification of these speakers. I do truly believe these are... Um, one of the top best bang for the buck bookshelf speakers out there uh, for the price and if even if you don't do a crossover modification i think you're going to get a lot of benefit of just doing the owens corning pink projects pink insulation modification inside um, the speaker box because if you recall that little chunk of white polyfilled, it was just stuffed in there, floating in the middle of the box. It probably rested towards the bottom of the box over time. Uh, it That was just crap, in my opinion. But I want to thank Dave. Thank you so much for helping me with this endeavor. Uh, I'm happy with the results. Um, uh, my ear is wanting to turn up that treble a little more. I'm missing some of that because I do have some high-frequency hearing loss based on some recent uh, hearing tests that I did. So I'm very pleased. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for watching. Hope this was a helpful video series. Goodbye.